I've been asked to try to draw lessons from our struggle for freedom in South Africa. And I had a part in it, so I'm really speaking from my personal experience and understanding. And the lessons are for how do we achieve peace with justice for the Palestinian people. And it's not a simple task to establish in a, a very short discussion. Even though there are very obvious similarities of a land and its people being occupied. Prime Minister Sharon in Israel spoke of the occupation, often denied by politicians there. He was one of the generals who carried out the occupation as Israel expanded its borders and controlled by laws enacted by a group of invaders. Another general, Dayan, notoriously said, there is not a single Israeli settlement that is not built on the ruins of a Palestinian settlement whose names have been obliterated from the map just as they were physically destroyed. Israel declares itself to be a Zionist Jewish state. That alone sets the framework for the exclusion of non-Jewish citizens from the same treatment as Jews in that state. There are many studies of Israeli laws enacted by the Knesset that discriminate against Palestinians. There are also administrative practices that consistently discriminate against Palestinians. And that, friends, is sufficient in terms of the definition of apartheid in the 1973 UN Declaration on the Apartheid Crime Against Humanity. And let me say, it was quite far-sighted when that declaration was drawn up, not to limit the declaration to exactly what was happening in South Africa, but to generalize on discrimination systematically on grounds of race and religion and other means of exclusion. <coughs> I'm appalled that Judge Goldstone, who did some brave things in exposing the apartheid crime against humanity in South Africa, as we neared the end of that system in the 1980s, denies the parallels, excusing the reality on the grounds of security for the occupying power, Israel. And the South African apartheid state did <coughs> just that. How dare he, and how can he justify its brutal occupation of lands far beyond the borders established by the UN when it established the State of Israel. And for me that's the only valid justification for its existence. Not a prior claim on grounds of a, 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 a divine being having given them the land. In modern, the modern world it's unacceptable. It is as if the judge would allow robbers who <coughs> occupy a home to use all the armed violence they can to defend their illegal acts and occupation, for otherwise they will be held accountable before the law. How does the judge justify the Israel Defense Force defying the decisions of the Israeli Supreme Court, ordering them to remove Jewish settlers on Palestinian land on the grounds that they will not use force against their own people? but force of the most brutal kind is used daily against Palestinians. Is this treating a group of people differently, oppressively, or not? We need to bear this in mind and not be bamboozled by the statement that this is just an emotional appeal to South Africans about apartheid because we know what it meant for our people. The reality is there are definitions of what apartheid is and Israel is an apartheid state. Let me say that I speak as a political activist in the struggle against the structured racism of apartheid. I speak as a commander in our armed force for liberation, MK. Later, after 22 years in prison, I was a spokesperson for the ANC in exile and addressed the UN Special Committee on Apartheid on behalf of the ANC. As you've heard, I was an advisor to two ministers of water affairs and forestry. Water and forestry, trees and fruit trees are important to understanding the Israeli oppression of Palestinian people. They've uprooted thousands of olive trees, orange groves, destroyed the hundreds of years old irrigation system. 
have turned huge areas into leisure parks at the expense of the Palestinian people who go hungry and suffer water shortage. I also speak as one who continues to be for tolerance and I would say that I am tolerant of difference between people and peoples. However, I am very intolerant of intolerance. You may be a religious believer, I am not. Do not demand that I believe or practice religion in your way, whoever you are. Do not demand that I be a racist, I will not be of that kind. Do not tell me that I must not criticize the Zionist state of Israel because to do so is anti-Semitic. About a half of Jewish Israelis are opposed to those policies. I wish their opposition was more determined. I've been learning lessons this afternoon of the parallel with the Kairos document of South Africa of 1985 and a similar document that's been prepared by theologians in Palestine and it needs widespread understanding. It needs understanding that the moral basis of apartheid Israel is unacceptable to people of all religions and of people of no religion, secular believers. We have to somehow, especially not in the Middle East itself, but in the United States, in Britain, Canada, France, Germany, the major powers establish the wrongness of their kind of knee-jerk anti-Islam, anti-Arab feelings. I know what 9-11 did in the United States and I understand why we in South Africa, if I'm drawing lessons, consciously did not resort to terrorism. That act of terrorism, and I happen to catch it on television live <coughs> and I must say as a one-time MK man I was envious <laughs> <coughs> and immediately my thought followed was thousands of people who should be supporting the Palestinians have been turned into <coughs> enemies ordinary office workers cleaners simple people who gave the right wing all their support when they should have been supporting people who are exploited like they are. That's the fundamental opposition to terrorism. It's indiscriminate. It did not bring about change except for a deeper and deeper antagonism to the Palestinian people and their just struggle for freedom. I have to say too that we, need, we live in a world of anti-Semitism. Being Jewish is not terribly important to me, but my name is Goldberg, and Jews and non-Jews identify me as Jewish, whether I like it or not. It's a matter of indifference to me, but as long as there is anti-Semitism, I shall accept that I am Jewish. Otherwise, I'm running away from something which is not evil in itself. So I'm opposed to this kind of intolerance. But the fundamental lesson I really want to make comes from the Freedom Charter, our Freedom Charter of 1955, a wonderful expression of democratic rights, expressing what we have to achieve, we've not achieved it yet, so that we may live as human beings, and it was an extraordinarily important strategic statement of intent. The mass of our people who framed the Freedom Charter through their ideas expressed during about 10,000 meetings said South Africa belongs to all who live in it and all shall have equal rights. In other words, it made place in the future liberated country for those who benefited from the apartheid system, the white population in general. Put another way, it said the struggle was against white supremacy, not against whites. That document also said, these freedoms we shall fight for side by side until we have won our liberty. Again, it is all, all of us who shall be set free and we shall set ourselves free. What an amazing show of humanity. The oppressed in achieving their liberty would set the oppressor free to live as human beings. I'm sad to say that many white South Africans still hold on to their 
misguided beliefs of their racial supremacy. I met a German PhD student who came to discuss with me a new approach to this issue. How do you define whiteness? It's the opposite of defining blackness as being something not good. How do whites arrive at their definition of superiority? It's making a serious study, not just for South Africa, but for Europe as well. In other words, we'd set the oppressor free to live as human beings, that is not as oppressors who deprive themse themselves and others of freedom. And that, free, that reinforces the idea that all shall be equal before the law. No group is excluded. How are we going to achieve this in the Middle East? The manifesto of Encontre with Cisway was careful to hold out the possibility of a negotiated settlement. But it also said the mass of people would ultimately seize power if needs be. Nelson Mandela again expressed these ideas in his famous I am prepared to die speech to the court in the Ravonia trial. He ended his four-hour address saying, more or less, all my life I have fought against white domination and I have fought against black domination. His ideal, he said, is a society in which people and peoples can live together in peace and harmony. Unity in action was another slogan of the ANC. It did not and could not directly lead every organization or action in every part of the country. But it did call upon all who opposed apartheid to concentrate on putting an end to it rather than causing splits through emphasizing different options for the future of South Africa. The common thread was opposition to racism. The United Democratic Front, front of well over a million people clearly aligned itself to the ANC. It adopted, amongst others, the eight convicted in the Ravonia trial. It was nice being made a patron of the UDF, I must tell you, and I'm very proud of it. <laughs> the UDF, with Kasatu as its backbone, included some 700 organizations from all around the country. The ANC welcomed, on this theme of unity in action, all who wanted freedom, people of different religions and those of no religion, <coughs> socialist, communist, anti-communist, ardent would-be capitalists. There was place for all. The violence of the apartheid regime, and perhaps we were lucky in this, the violence of the apartheid regime was as nothing in comparison with the utter brutality of Israel's occupation of Palestine. I mean the whole of Palestine from which Palestinians have been driven out. And let's make no mistake, the Zionist enterprise is to drive out all others than Jews. It's not the only state in the Middle East where there is this wish to be one religion, one people. But I happen to be, as a white South African, I was opposed to apartheid. Having been identified as Jewish, I have to make a stand against that kind of action by the Zionist, Zionists of this world. The greatest violence is seen in the occupied West Bank and Gaza. We did not see tanks with guns blazing, protected army, armored bulldozers flattening buildings in the center of cities, nor did we see armored helicopter gunships taking out homes, children, whole families all done with great precision. We did not see the destruction by bombing of the centers of towns. Checkpoints and fences we know about from the bountifulization of our country with artificial boundaries and migrant labor and the Group Areas Act that determined where people could live. We did see the brutalization of our people, but not only the oppressed were treated with brutality. We saw the brutalization of young white soldiers and policemen and those black soldiers and police who could be induced to serve the oppressor. That brutality has left scars in the psyche of all South Africans and I believe it will take generations to overcome that pain and suffering. We see the same brutalization of whole generations of Palestinians, the suffering of people prevented from going to a doctor, of ambulances being stopped and pregnant women forced to give birth at checkpoints while young soldiers look on laughing. 
we see the same brutalization of generations of young Israeli soldiers called upon to destroy a people and society. The flag is flying, and this is a courageous attempt on our part to keep the flag flying. <laughs> but I'm afraid when it disrupts you, we would have to let the flag go and depend entirely okay. on your eloquence to keep the flag going. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Professor. A theocratic state where the Jewish, Zionist, Islam, Islamic cannot be democratic. By definition, it excludes a group or groups from full and equal rights. In practice in Israel, Jews are Jews, religious observant or not, criminal, terrorist or whatever. They have a legal right to full citizenship, even if they have never previously been there or had forebears who lived there. It is a religious concept of Jewishness in the Holy Land given by Yahweh to his people. Hence the law of return. Non-Jews, law of return for people who have never been there. Non-Jews are required to state their religious adherence, including the many forms that are practiced. Jews who become citizens of Israel are able to retain their previous nationality. Foreigners and Palestinians and Arabs have to give up their original citizenship. Only non-Jewish foreigners must swear allegiance to the state on acquiring citizenship. Palestinians who have lived there, having been expelled by force, or simply to visit abroad, have no right of return to their homes. We in South Africa did take up arms when all else had failed, but offered genuine negotiations over the transfer of power in our original MK Manifesto in December 61. The purpose of setting up MK was to avoid terrorist acts by those who wanted to be free. There were individual groups beginning to roam around committing random acts of violence against others. ANC and its allies and the Communist Party in particular did not see this as political struggle but dangerous for the future. Armed struggle is about political action, not revenge, not about individuals. And the place for all in the future, as in our Freedom Charter, means no revenge. Hard to swallow, very hard to swallow, I understand it. But if we're going to get there and make our land that Nelson Mandela <coughs> described in his ideal, and sees ideal, a land where people can live together in freedom, in peace and harmony, we have to take that seriously. And as I said before, that meant the struggle was against white supremacy, not against whites as whites. And what a humanitarian belief this was by thousands of people whom we called uneducated, unsophisticated, who accepted this leadership and followed the ANC and still do today. Even though we make mistakes as a government, even though we don't always do what's best, people believe in that humanitarian approach. The careful policies of the ANC under the leadership of O.R. Tambo during 30 years of exile, trading a carefully principled line during the Cold War years, enabled the liberation movement to win support from people and governments everywhere governments in the Eastern Bloc, people in the Western Bloc. And our Tambo was truly great. Um, he, he, he talked about the role of the great religions. He himself was an ardent Anglican uh, believer. And on occasion at a, a, a consultation organized in London, he said all the great religions proclaim peace and harmony as their goal and with him I have to ask them why are they at loggerheads? Why do they kill each other? Why do they exclude each other? Why are Jews, <coughs> religious Jews, opposed to Islam? Why are many believers in Islam anti-Semitic? Facts, comrades. If we believe in peace and harmony and freedom, 
why don't we take our religion and take it seriously? It's part of the reason why I'm not a religious believer. I can't tolerate these contradictions. And so, uh, why am I banging on about religion when I'm not religious? Because all over the world we see right-wingers <coughs> using religion for reactionary <coughs> purposes. And I know there are progressive <coughs> theologians and priests and imams and rabbis who believe that people can live together, who would remove the moral basis for intolerance, for occupying others' land, for the brutalities that they practice on each other. We need seriously, if we can, to start undoing some of the misunderstandings, the blaming of the oppressed, the victims for their victimization, and for the victims themselves to understand that their own freedom is going to depend on changing the balance of forces supporting the Jewish Islamic, I mean the Jewish Zionist state of Israel against the people of Palestine who often forget that they're Christian Palestinians. In South Africa when I've taken part in events such as this I've heard about the rights of Islam and Islamic people. They're Christian Palestinians and I'm sure they're secular Palestinians who all have the right to their human rights just as we in the ANC said of all people in South Africa. As you can see, I've got a wad of notes here. <laughs> I found it very difficult to actually keep a speech down to 20 minutes and very difficult to contain my anger about the role of the Zionist State of Israel in the Middle East a country which they say was established because of the Holocaust which took place, there's no doubt many people in Europe and in Germany itself have a terrible conscience about this and will not criticize the State of Israel I never failed to do so in my well over 30 speaking tours I made there Israel has a memorial, Yad Vashem, lest we forget. And in their action show, they have forgotten what brutality does and practice the same kind of brutality. I'm ashamed. I must speak out. I must change somehow the balance of forces through boycott, through disinvestment, through sanctions, and especially to those major powers that support the State of Israel. I have the German Order of Merit for my helping to build relations between the peoples of this country and Germany. It doesn't stop me criticizing them. For their unconditional guarantee of the security of the Jewish State of Israel without any guarantees to the Palestinian people. The same with the United States, Britain, France, and we have to change that. We have to go on a conscious campaign of showing that the people of Islam take the fundamentals of their religion seriously in believing in peace and harmony and not using it as a justification for the most brutal violence as Christian fundamentalists do and who are equally wrong and as Jewish fundamentalists do and are equally wrong long hard road ahead of us but I believe those are some crucial points if you want I'll go on speaking for another three hours <laughs> but I won't, thanks very much <coughs>